traders, welcome to a new video on Bitcoin options. This was a Patreon suggested video, and this is going to be part one in a series on option strategies, option statistics, and overall how we can trade options in cryptocurrency. This is a different kind of ball game than spot markets um, and futures markets, and it's a little bit more complex, and that's why I wanted to devote a whole series to it. So without further ado, well actually with further ado, because if you haven't heard me say it for the 950 second time, uh, my price action volume guide is for sale. And uh, purchase that comes with access to private videos, my professional discord and private resources, link in the description below. Okay, now without further ado, let's go into options. I'm gonna try to keep this video under 15 minutes and maybe in the future with my more complex videos and options, we can go a little bit longer. One little teaser for what I'm going to talk about in the future. Um, if you guys know the website that I love, SKU, they have options data that is when it loads and when it shows you, it is very, very nice. Um, one of them, I guess I'm just going to have to say it with looking at a blank screen here, or I'll just uh, I'll refresh you. Is they have a they have put call ratios which are relatively common, and then they also have um, a percentage of how many people are buying puts. How many people are buying calls? How many people are selling puts? And how many people are selling or uh, buying calls? And they also have volatility graphs and, and plenty of other interesting things. Looks like it's not really cooperating with me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go for a little bit, and we'll go back to this. So one way that I like to think about options, because I I know a lot of people get these mixed up. What is a call? What is a put? Is you like to call someone up and put someone down. When you buy a call, you are betting that the market goes up. When you buy a put, you are betting that the market goes down. Now, there is something known as a strike price, which is the price that needs to be cleared for your option to be in the money or out of the money. If I buy a put at 7,500, I'm betting that in six days, the index price of Bitcoin on Deribit is gonna be higher than, than 7,500. If I buy a put at 7,500, then I'm betting that the market is going to be below 7,500 in six days at expiration. Now, you may think, well, wouldn't you just want to buy calls at 6,000 and sell puts at like 11,000? Not exactly. And that's where the premium comes into play. What you see here is the premium or the cost that it would take for you to buy or sell this option. Now, we have two options. <laughs> pun, for buying or selling these options. We can market buy or we can bid. We can market sell or we can offer. So let's say that I don't like, I don't love the idea of market buying a uh, call at, at 0.324. Um, then what I could do is I could set a bid. So let's say, I, hey, I'd rather just pay um, 0.1 for this option. So what I would do is, you know, I could, I could type that in and I could say, okay, um, I want to pay 0.1 or oops, I'm not gonna pay that much. I'm gonna pay put one. Uh, and then, you know, there you go. And then I can put the quantity of what I want it to be. And you can see that there's a there's currently a bid at 0.0505. So, you know, maybe I wanna buy this guy at 0.07, or oops, 0.07, or is that enough? Yeah, there we go. So I wanna buy for that amount. And then I can put the quantity in of, you know, how many I wanna buy. And then you can see, uh, here, if I wanted to buy you know, five, you can see the buy margin there. Okay, now here's the thing. How do we know if an option is a good idea to buy? How do we know if an option is a good idea to sell? Two things. One is I have a handy dandy calculator that will help us out a lot. And two, we're gonna be looking at something called implied volatility. Let's first use this calculator to calculate break-even prices. So let's take this example here and let's just do it. Let's say that we make a big mistake. We market buy a 0.3235 with a strike price of 6,000 because we say, hey, we're buying a call with a strike price of 6,000, betting that the market's gonna be above 6,000 um, uh, in six days. Isn't this a great idea? Well, let's go find out. I think I know the answer and I think you guys might too, but let's see. So 0.3235, I believe it was. The price would need to be above 88.69 for you to be profitable if you were to buy at that premium. So that's not great. But let's say instead of market buying, we set a bid at 0.1. Well then, 
you would have to have price be above 66, uh, above that number there. Now you may wonder, well, okay, so now I understand, you're right. Uh, we can't really just market by or just buy you know, a strike price that's really low on a call. What if we were just to set really low bids? Well, here's the issue. Look at volume. See how many transactions occurred? Yeah. Probably no one is going to market sell to you at 0.0505 um, because if you were actually able to bid at that, um, with that premium there, to bid that low, let me type that in. With the strike price there, then if someone mistakenly or for some reason sold to you, uh, you're betting, you're buying a call at 6,000 for that low of a premium, price would need to be above 6,319 in six days for you to be profitable. Hey, let's say price ends at uh, 8,300. You would make a lot. I mean, you'd make on that with one, you would make, uh, with, with the size of one, you'd make 0 0.2771 Bitcoin or you make uh, $2,300 at settlement. You know, if price is at 9,000, you'd make that, as you can see. With just a tiny purchase there of 0 0.0505, you could make, yeah, wow. But the world doesn't work that way. And you may wonder, well, Okay, so we, we, we can find out the break-even price, but the break-even price doesn't tell you everything. You know, with buying these puts, with buying these calls, and with shorting these calls and shorting these puts, would it be great if there was an indicator that told us the expensiveness of options? There is. It is called implied volatility. It is everywhere. Uh, it's, in the mar it's even in the order history here. You can see the implied volatility, the premium that they paid, and the size of their order. In the puts and in the calls, you can see you know 24-hour volume is pretty similar, uh, for today at least. Implied volatility, here's one rule of thumb. I don't want to explain all of it today because I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes, but think about it this way, guys. You typically want to buy options with low implied volatility. That means that you're getting a good rate. You typically want to sell options with a high implied volatility. What does that mean? Well, what it, what it means is that, hey, let's, let's take a look at this 6,000 call again. Whoever is selling, I mean, here is selling at a great rate. I mean, if this was ever filled for whatever reason, they're selling at a very good rate because as long as the price is below, um, what was it? With 0.3235, as long as the price is below 88.69, that person's profitable. Um, so <laughs> I, they're gonna be okay. I, I mean, unless price is above 88.69. So if you were to uh, put an offer here, uh, you're, you're, you're putting an offer at a very, very good price, and that's why the implied volatility is so high. You don't wanna buy when implied vol buy an option when implied volatility is that high. But this is beautiful here. And this is these are like the dream scenarios if you ever get um, your bid filled with implied volatility this low, because it means that you're really getting an unbelievable deal, like what I had showed before. But that's not you know really reasonable. Um, let's look for other kinds of implied volatility. Now, one thing you can do, when, let's say you're looking to buy a call. How about we look at the implied volatility of the offers of, um, of these? So this is the implied volatility of the offers here. Now what I see is the lowest, I mean, you don't always just wanna go for the lowest, but here we have an 87.50 with an implied volatility of 89.1. Let's go find this out. So the offer's at 0 0.0305 for the premium. Let's go type in 0 0.0305 with an 87.50. I wanna see what the break-even price is for this. Point, what was it, 0 0.0305, right? 0 0.0305, perfect. Yeah, so break even of 90.25. Um, yeah, that's, uh, so you're betting that the market is going to be above 9,025 uh, in six days and you will be in profit. You will pay this much and you will be in profit. Let's say the price is at, let's see how much profit you'd make on that if price is at 9,100. Uh, yeah, you'd make about 350 bucks, sweet. So the thing with options, I have to say, is it's one way you can play them is um, low probability plays can pay a lot of money. Uh, you you may lose a few times, but when you place bets like this that are that are that are quite small, um, but then price is something like this. I mean, the payoff can be can be quite nice on a small investment. So that's one benefit of options is is your risk can be small, but your reward can be great. If you buy options, this is looking at logging options. 
But you can actually see, guys, that there's a big difference between going long on a call and going short on a call. When I go long on a call, my max loss is only 0 0.0305. That's all. That's it. But my max gain is, is you know, the rest of that one Bitcoin. Because when we calculate profit, it's one Bitcoin minus our premium. However, when you short a call, um, your max gain is the, is the premium. And your max loss is that. I'm not saying that shorting calls and shorting puts is, you know, a terrible idea. Uh, why did my camera just get super hazy? <laughs> camera, are you drunk or high? Okay, I, my camera just, whatever. Uh, I guess it's gonna be hazy for the rest of this video. Kind of like, um, I don't know, I was gonna compare that to options somehow, but can it, oh, it's like out of, oh, it's back in focus. Well, will you look at that? Okay, four minutes until I hit my 15 minute mark and I really gotta knock over 15 minutes with this. So no more talking about the haziness of the camera. Uh, but yeah, so if you were to short here, so let's say we were to, yeah, so let's say we sell at a premium um, of 0 0.0305, right, uh, where was that? That guy was here. We sell here, so we put an offer, it gets filled, someone market buys our offer, great. We're basically betting that the market's gonna be below 87.50 by expiration. Here's what's gonna happen. We are going to get paid that if we're right. You know, if, um, well, that's our max gain. So let's say that the, the price is below 90.25 and the price is at um, 8,500. Well, if we had shorted, um, we, make, we make that. But if the price is at, let's say, 87.50, yeah, we make that, so. This kind of play, guys, is basically, uh, I mean, you're, you, you have a reward, um, but your risk is quite high. So this is kind of the, the thing that you have to think about that, think about it this way, guys. Shorting a call is not the same as buying a put. Yeah, buying a put means I'm betting that the market goes down. Yeah, shorting a call means that I'm betting that the market goes down. They both mean, you know, the market's going to go down, I, I, at least I hope. But it, it, it's completely different because when we short a call, what we're actually doing is we have a large amount of risk with a small gain. There are ways to make plays on that. Um, but the basic strategy that you wanna do is if you're shorting a call, you want to charge as high of a price as possible, which basically means a really high implied volatility. You know, when we take something like this guy at the 6,500 with a 0.2645, um, 6,500 with a point, point, uh, 0.2645, what this guy would do is as long as the <laughs> as long as the price is below 88.38, he profits. Um, but, and this is the max gain. But he loses this if price is above 88.38. Bye bye. You just lost that. So if price is above the, actually wait. Let's say price ends at 7,000. Mm -hmm. Well then they would lose uh, if you had. If you took this and you um, shorted, then your loss would be $500. Yeah. If the price was 8,000, your loss is 1,500. And if the price was like 9,000, well, that's above break even. So yeah, you, you, can, only, you can only lose you know, uh, what you put in. So you don't, you'd lose that. It's saying you would lose 0 0.2778, um, but I'm pretty sure you just lose your, your premium. So that's really the way that this, this game works is when you're shorting, when you're, when you're selling these options, you want to charge as high of a premium as possible and get as much implied volatility as you can. When you're buying um, uh, an option, you want to have as low of implied volatility as you possibly can. Like this order here has very low implied volatility. Buying a, buying a um, put with this bid at 92.50. So if I was to click here, click puts, click in 92.50, and then at 92.50, I'm if I buy this, I'm betting the market stays below 92.50. I'm paying 0 0.104, that's what I'm charging. So hopefully someone, you know, market sells to that. Um, what do we do? Well, if we were actually able to get filled there, then we need price to be below 83.79. Um, so that, eh, okay. I guess, yeah, that's, that's fine. And let's say that, hey, let's say price ends up at uh, 82.50 what we are able to um, bid uh, with that. So if we bid that, then our profit will be $1,000. So 
So that's why placing these bids, you know, at at at, at good rates here can can work really well. But what I highly recommend, guys, and I'm gonna oh, I went over 50 minutes. I failed. Okay, I'm gonna keep this under 15 minutes. I'll keep this under 16. This has been a very basic intro. I just kind of like went around, looked at a few things. We looked at volume on each one of these uh, uh, prices. We looked at implied volatility. The most important metric that we may have in options is implied volatility. And you can think about that as basically buy low implied volatility, sell high implied volatility. If I'm shorting a call or shorting a put, I want high implied volatility. If I'm buying a put or buying a call, I probably am going to want low implied volatility. You can put bids, you can put offers in this. You know, you could slice in a bid, slice in an offer, or you can market buy or market sell. This has been part one of options. Um, part two, maybe going into more advanced parts. Um, there are lots of other options that you can that you can look at as well. Like you know, I can look at the 20th of June and plenty plenty more things happening here. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that options are really interesting and I think that I would highly recommend you look more into implied volatility, um, which I can attach a link in the description below for, for some resources on implied volatility. And I would also recommend that you look at um, break even and, and profitability by looking at something like this and looking at the premium you pay and how that changes your break even price. And uh, if you feel like you're ready, then what you can do is begin to play around maybe with uh, mock positions or, or, or the Deribit test net where it's actually not real positions. And then if you're really ready, then you start trading options and and then, you know, best of luck to you. Um, you, can, you can start buying uh, calls and puts and, and shorting calls and puts and doing your thing. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope this was helpful for just a very, very, very basic intro into the world of options. Happy trading, see you guys soon.